Hey, hey, happy Thursday, everybody. You are listening to Mental Fitness Matters. I am your host, Tracy Austin, and this is WSIC Radio. What a roller coaster of a few weeks it has been for our nation. As everybody is obviously aware, we are facing a serious time in our country right now with the coronavirus pandemic. Um, There's so much anxiety, stress, worry, fear, Um, not only fear concerning whether or not you or a loved one will get the virus, but there's a lot of stress around finances. People are losing their jobs, their life savings, their businesses, their minds, their livelihoods, all in the blink of an eye. So this is real life right now. This is the reality as we know it. So I think it's really important for us to begin to have these conversations and talk about the impacts that this current crisis is having on people's mental health and financial health and ways that we can begin to shift our mindset in general about money, but also about ways to thrive during this time. This is not a time to go on defense. This really is a time for us to dig our heels in, go on offense, and thrive during the crisis. So on today's show, I have one of the most amazing, wise, genuine people beside me right now. I cannot wait to introduce him. Um, I'm going to introduce him momentarily, but he's a financial expert. Um, And we're going to talk about money and mindset. And what better way to start having this conversation than right now? But before I introduce my guest, I need my viewers out here to know that even though we are in a time that there's so many uncertainties, we still have the ability to choose our focus. We still have the ability to choose our focus. And once you realize that you have control over your thinking, things in your life will change very, very quickly, okay? It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel confused. It's okay to feel stressed and overwhelmed. Um, But there's things that we can begin to do today that we're going to talk about to help people get back on track because all those feelings are completely normal and they're expected, especially during a time of crisis. Um, So today, my guest and I are going to help you shift your mindset and provide you with some practical strategies on how to stay mentally healthy during this time, as well as feeling more secure financially. All right, so I'm going to get into it. Um, Let me go ahead and introduce today's guest. I have with me He brings so much value. He brings so much wisdom. I have Mr. Joe Del Monte. Welcome to the show, Joe. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Tracy. I really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. I'm so glad to have you. Um, Joe is a personal financial consultant, and he's the founder of Parkside Wealth in Mooresville. And he truly is a person that provides education. He provides value. He provides coaching and consulting to his clients, to the community, about how to change our mindset about money and thrive from a mental and financial perspective. Um, So, Joe, welcome to the show. Please tell our community a little bit about yourself and Parkside Wealth. Yeah, yeah. Um, Well, uh, this is my, I live in Mooresville, as as Tracy mentioned, the Lake Norman area. This is my second tour of duty, I would say, in the Lake Norman area. Uh, Previous two years, my wife and I and my son at the time, we lived in Colorado Springs. Yeah couple of years that was cool and then uh, before that we lived in Huntersville and Cornelius for six years so we're back we have roots here uh, we bought a home here um, and we feel really blessed to be back here's a place that we always love we're both from uh, my wife's name is Christy we've been married 10 years we're both from uh, Buffalo New York originally uh, so as I know there's a, a number of us uh, uh, Yankees as you would call them <laughs> down here sorry for that um, <coughs> Uh, we have a son, Isaiah, who's six. We have a daughter, Grace, who's nine months. Um, you know, our our, uh, our faith is number one in our life. Uh, next is our marriage. Next is our kids. And then after that comes everything else. <laughs> so uh, and we really try to model that out uh, in our life. Um, Parkside Wealth, uh, to kind of give you a, a quick overview, I, I've been in, the, in and around the financial services industry for uh, a couple decades now. Um, I say that, and I don't even realize that I'm that old, but I am. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so it, it really kind of started out of uh, just my experience in the industry. I had sort of a, a uh, not a linear path like a lot of uh, financial professionals have. A lot of people start in the industry as maybe a financial advisor, and they they get their they pass their securities exams, and they start as an advisor when they're 20, and when they're 40, they've been an advisor for 20 years. I actually worked for a lot of different uh, investment institutions in a lot of different roles. I was client-facing. I was business development. I was consulting. I was on investment committees. 
uh, day trading, all types of, of things. I mean, you name it. Get and it done. I, I guess so, yeah. It's funny because I, I always wanted to do something else. I'll be yeah. honest. That's probably not the best way to promote myself, but uh, I did. I I, uh, I always wanted to do something else, but I feel like this was the path God had me on to yeah. really learn how to help people. Uh, Parkside Wealth was really formed out of my, I would say, frustration with the industry in general. Um, it's it's always been an industry, and it's it's sort of evolving slowly, but it's been an industry that has largely been skewed towards the provider, not the purchaser or mm -hmm. customer or consumer, if you will. And everything from Wall Street to the mainstream media is designed to sort of keep consumers a little bit uneducated, a little bit unsure-footed. And uh, I just got frustrated with that. And now there's a lot of good people in the industry doing great things. Um, but there's a lot of people that just don't know where to turn. Right. And uh, one of the biggest drivers for this was I just saw there's a, a lot of people that weren't getting the right service. They weren't getting put first. If they didn't have enough money, they weren't treated as a valuable client. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of this, there's also uh, the, the age of Google. We're in the information age. Everything is available. And when that first started coming to light, that was a real valuable thing for people. Like, I can find an answer to anything I need right now. Well, now the opposite is true. I can find every answer for everything I ever thought I might need or not need right now, and now I'm super confused. Right. And so people are lacking that human experience. They're lacking a, a, a person to go to to really help them, you know, navigate through the noise. And so uh, that's kind of take all of that packaging. That's that's kind of where I find myself today is, is really trying to help people where they're at. And I think that you bring up a good point because really how I met you and really one of the main reasons I was like, I mean, you would be so valuable for uh, the Mental Fitness Matters community and our clients and the people that are tuning in every single week because of the educational piece that you provide. You walked into our office a couple months ago um, not to sell anything, just to provide knowledge, just to provide education. And I thought that was so powerful. And I think right now during this time, it can't be it's just timeless. It's perfect that uh, we have met, but also that you're here on today because people are f afraid. You know, yeah. the reality of where we are right now and the crisis and the impact of what we've seen over the last couple of weeks, people are scared, you know, and their financial components to this, whether they've lost their job, they've lost their business, they're not sure how they're going to provide for their family. Um, and so I think it's perfect timing that you're here to be able to provide some support from a financial perspective. What can people do with that um, as we kind of talk about this together? Overwhelming stress and anxiety, the uncertainty of next paychecks, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're probably seeing clients come into your office or meeting with people on a daily basis now talking about finances, right? What, where are we now? Yeah, th today, I mean, it's just a, it's a weird time. Um, the first thing I would say to people is just be okay with what you have going on. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of times we find ourselves uh, in situations not like this. This is pretty unique. But in other situations, 2008 was a recession, 2001. I mean, this is this cyclical. It happens. People lose their jobs. Companies turn over. Stuff like that happens. The worst place you can go is to look at what you did wrong in the past right yeah. now. I mean, at some point, we're going to – and this is why I do a, a lot of – where a lot, a lot of the coaching aspect comes in, consulting aspect with people and behavior uh, patterns and things like that. We're going to have to look at decisions you made. We're going to have to look at why you made them, not so that we can judge one another. I mean, I, I'll be happy to share my terrible money decisions I've made. Um, and that's how you learn. Yeah. But the worst time to be looking into the past is right now and saying, I should have done this. I should, should have worked at that different company. I, I should have started that business when I was supposed to. Look, today you're where you are. We don't know. I mean, we have an idea what the stimulus package looks like. <laughs> you know, it's, are people going to get some checks? Yes. Is that going to solve all your problems? No. Are you going to have to pay that back someday and, and higher taxes? Po probably. I mean, who knows, right? right? I think, number one, don't dwell on past mistakes. Start where you are. Number two, and this goes into a conversation I had with a really good friend yesterday, um, successful guy. He's got a great business, great family, wonderful kids, real, really busy, mm -hmm. busy life. Um, but busy because they want to be. They do a lot of things they want to do. But he said something on the phone to me yesterday. He said, you know, this has really been a great time for me and my family to kind of come closer together. 
It's like my kids are playing in the yard together. Um, you know, we're spending more time together. My wife is homeschooling my kids, just you know, being that super mom that, you know, she's, she, she can be. And <clears throat> I think people are realizing there's, there's silver lining in this. Absolutely. So, you know, it's not money advice. It, it's, it's really sort of like life advice. Take the opportunity to find the simple pleasures in life. Have a two-hour dinner with your family. You know, I love that. Like, take a walk. Yeah, <laughs> and what you're talking about, and how I'm hearing you say this, is choosing our focus, right? You know, there's so many things that are going on outside of our control um, that we may not have answers to today, but there's some things going on that are in front of you right now that you can begin to focus your time around and looking at it, the perspective in a different way. Um, yeah, there may be some things that you're worried about and stressed about it, but if we focus and dwell there, those things only grow. Right. Sure. And so what you want to do is, number one, kind of choose your focus. Sure. If if you're con constantly consuming the news 24 seven, this may be the perfect time to, like you said, schedule dinner with your family, yeah. schedule time to interact with people or pick up the phone and and call somebody that you haven't had time to call because you've been so busy. You know, so switching that focus a little bit and choosing what's important acknowledging what is important right now. I think this has really given everybody another perspective of how to slow down just a little bit. Yeah, and, and, and really look at what matters. Um, and that kind of goes into some of the things that I, I, I teach on money. Um, money is just a conduit towards something else. And, <clears throat> you know, one of the biggest things I talk about with people is, is the why. There's a lot of drive to get more in this country and in our society, but very few people have really addressed why they do it or why they feel the need to do it or why they feel the need to make certain money decisions. Right. And I think now people are finding themselves in a situation where their money's getting cut down um, and they're looking at the car in the driveway and they're like, gosh, I should have gotten that car that was half as expensive. Mm. I really don't care about this car right now. And they're looking at a lot of things in their life that they made those decisions, but they made those decisions because they didn't have a why behind it. And so I think it's an opportunity to sort of reflect. It's an opportunity to say, okay, how do I change my lifestyle going forward? What are the things that really give me peace and joy? What are the things that give me true value? And let me make a roadmap or a plan to make better decisions with my money over time. And small good decisions, or say good decisions on small matters, make uh, it's the sum of really good life decisions. And so there's an opportunity to have those discussions now. I love that, Joe. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a break and we're going to come right back and we're going to continue this conversation about your joy and your money. Why now is the perfect time to shift your mindset about money? I'm here with the amazing Joe Del Monte, Parkside Wealth. You guys are listening to Mental Fitness Matters. I'm your host, Tracy Austin. We're going to take a break and we will be right back.
Hey, hey, welcome back. You are listening to Mental Fitness Matters. I am your host, Tracy Austin, and I am here with Joe Del Monte, personal financial consultant of Parkside Wealth. And today we are talking about your joy and your money, why now is the perfect time to shift your mindset about money. Um, guys, when we left off, we were just talking about some of the stressors and the anxieties that are out here right now. And the reality is there is about... 7 million people in the United States that are affected by generalized anxiety disorder and 6 million people with panic disorder. And we really are expecting that number to rise. And so Joe is here today. We want to begin to have these conversations to help people thrive during this time, really decrease some of the worry and and the fears and help people really feel like that they are in the driver's seat. Um, So, Joe, let's kind of finish our conversation that you were having before. I think from a perspective standpoint, people really need to get focused on their why right now, right? Instead of looking at the bigger picture around money, because there may be some things outside of your control, um, but there are probably some things that you can start to do right now inside of your home to kind of manage and get control over your money. There may be things right now in your house that you could sell. Um, So we might be looking for a bailout from the government, but we don't know when that's coming. So we have to really get focused in going on the offense. What do I have right in front of me right now that's inside of my home that I may can go to and turn to and say, you know what, I really don't need this. Do I need this subscription this month? Is there something that I can remove from my list of things that I have right now that may give me a little bit more wiggle room to breathe? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I'm working with a couple right now, and one of the things that I'm having them do is create a list, uh, ironically, this was before all this started, and, and categorize all their expenses into four categories. You know, one, category one would be, you call it, uh, absolutely necessary. Category two would be not necessary, but love it, right? Hmm. That might be if you're, I, I love exercise, I love the gym. It's, I guess it's not necessary. I could work out at home, but, man, this really feeds me, okay? Category three would be not necessary, and like it. It's kind of okay. Like, I have a Netflix su- subscription. It's $13 a month or whatever. I, I, it's definitely not necessary. I like it once a week to watch something. And then the fourth category is not necessary and don't like it. And th- the funny thing is people have a lot in the fourth category hmm. of not necessary and don't really like it. So, you know, it, it's time to really take inventory of where we spend money and what is the value that we're getting back intrinsically from the things that we're spending the money on. Um, That's a good point. And I think as you just described that, it really helps people focus in on what can I control right now? And it really gives them a visual of where is my spending going? Because a lot of times if you have it coming in and you're expecting to come in week by week, you may not look at that report every single week, right? And so you know it's coming. So your suggestion right there, I love it because I think this is a great way for people to see where is my money? Where is it going? What do I really need, right? And what's is it because I like it or do I need it? Um, so I think that's a really good thing. And I think creativity. Um, we really have a uh, innovative and creative nation. I've seen so many videos and, and, and posts and Instagram type things that people are getting very creative on how they're going to make money, but also how uh, they can sell. They can People have ideas, and I think this is the best time right now. Continue to create. Get creative about how you can make a few extra bucks from the comfort of your own home. Technology is amazing, right? Absolutely, and you touched on something there, Tracy. We tend to look at periods of recession or depression as, hey, like the world's coming to an end. Uh, We're all going to lose it. Statistically and historically, I I think more millionaires are made during these periods of time than anything. This is essentially what we have is a transfer of money. It's being transferred somewhere, right? Um, It doesn't just disappear out of thin air uh, like people believe. Um, You know, think about the stock market going down right now. In order for the stock market to go down, people have to sell shares, right? There has to be so much supply that it pushes the price down. Um, Those shares are owned by somebody that's cashing in on them right right now or they're or they're short selling and that's another topic for another another day i guess but uh there's buyers and sellers there's trading going on there's things happening in the markets and so uh it it is a time to get creative it is a time to think through take inventory of your life where you spend money why you spend it um, what you want your life to look like and start to really think about what are the the creative ways we can uh go out and, and, and earn a living 
and why are we doing it, by the way? Yeah. And, and are we trying to meet some standard of living um, that we feel like we have to meet because society told us? Or where are we ultimately comfortable? And that goes back to the why. If you really know why you're doing something, um, y you're going to have a more a, a clearer path towards getting there Absolutely. than just if money is the goal. There's a lot of it in this country. You can get it. But if... <laughs> If I've seen a lot of people have the goal of money, have that mindset of getting it, getting after it, and they get it, and they're still not happy. Right. There's a problem there. I'd be curious to see, Tracy, those statistics that you threw out, out of all of those people, what percentage of people could tie some of those anxiety and depression issues towards finances in some way. I would, right. I would probably uh, bet right. that it's a pretty high, uh, probably a high majority of people, there's a financial burden somewhere in that family. Absolutely. And that financial burden is creating a lot of stress. And we want to begin to assess, is it unnecessary stress? Um, and if so, what are those ways that we can really kind of lift some of the weight? Um, and one more tip I want to say before we, Joe, I want to make sure you introduce in terms of how people can connect with you um, is really, I want to encourage you guys, if you're out there and you're feeling this overwhelming amount of stress during the time that we're doing now, also take some time to help others. A lot of times if we step outside of ourselves just for a moment and encourage somebody else or ask, how can I help somebody else? There's a lot of people looking for volunteers. There's a lot of people um, just looking for maybe resources online, picking up the phone, calling in, checking in on people. Get yourself busy doing other things. Once you take your mind off self, you're going to feel your anxiety rise a little bit in the sense of not being as stressed. Um, because you're helping somebody else. So make sure, guys, that you're not only creating and getting creative with how you look forward next to spending your money, ways that you can begin to save money or sell some of the things that you currently have in your own home, but also getting strategic around where is my money going? I love the idea you just gave about creating that list. You know, can you say that one more time? The, go through the list? Go through that list. It yeah, was, it's, it's real simple. It's, it's divide all your expenses, everything from your rent and mortgage down to ordering pizza once a week. It, take everything you spend a dollar on and divide it into four categories. Category one is called absolutely necessary. You have to keep those. Category two is called uh, not necessary but love it. Yeah. Right? You're going to want to keep those. Category three is called not necessary but like it. Some of those you're going to keep. Some of those you're going to be able to get rid of pretty easily. And category four is called not necessary and don't even like it. <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> right. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. And the, the last one is choose your focus. Remember, yeah. you have control over your thinking. And if the media, the news is taking your control and your focus and creating more stress and anxiety, give yourself permission to turn it off. Set boundaries and limits with how much time you're spending in front of the TV consuming things that are not helpful for you. Joe, thank you. I want you to go ahead and let people know how do they reach you. If you guys are looking for education, consultation, support through this time, please reach out to him. He's available and he's accepting new people right now. Tell yeah, them how absolutely. to reach you. Uh, well, you can check out my website. It's called ParksideWealth.com, ParksideWealth.com. And uh, I have a lot of different articles I write up there. You could, you could contact me through there. Uh, my email is joe d at parksidewealth.com. You could find me on LinkedIn. Um, and quite honestly, if you're listening to this radio show and you're feeling like panicky and you just need a human being to talk to, I love doing what I do. I'd be happy to spend some time with you on the phone to kind of walk you through some things, whether you're a customer or not, and you just want to vent or, or get some get some tips and advice. Uh, give me a call. My cell phone. I'll give you my direct number: seven zero four six zero four eight 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 four. Just don't spam me. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you are awesome. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been listening to the Mental Fitness Matters show. As you know, this show is also uploaded to our podcast, Mental Fitness Matters, so you will never miss the show. We cannot wait to see you guys next week. Shine bright. Even through this darkness, you still have the ability to shine your light. Have a great week. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for being here, Joe. Thanks for having me.